Hi guys, listen, I want to get right into the scripture and it's in Matthew chapter 5 and 20. Matthew chapter 5 and 20 and in the scripture Jesus is talking to his disciples and saying to them, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5 and 20, Jesus is saying to his disciples, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. And so guys, it's possible that you can have this righteousness and consider yourself a follower of Christ and still miss the kingdom of God. How is this possible that the Pharisees and the scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees, these people, uh, religious and political groups of that time who were well known they come from a polished background they know the words they follow the laws of Moses only these were the go-to for a lot of people the final say so in a lot of things during those times how is it that Jesus is saying that these men their righteousness we have to exceed their righteousness in order to see heaven so guys there is a righteousness that will cause you to miss God, to miss heaven. And one thing that was revealed to me in my prayer time and in my word time is that what the Pharisees and the scribes lacked was compassion. They lacked discernment, they lacked compassion, they lacked charity. Okay, the what we read about in uh, there's on my wall, First Corinthians chapter thirteen, when it talks about you people that they ha- they they sing with the tongues of of men and and they give their body to be burned and they they understand all prophecy and they understand all dreams and they give to the poor. If they don't have love, charity, they are. If they don't have love. They are nothing. If you don't have love, you are nothing. And so you see, this is what the Pharisees had a lot of knowledge. The scribes, they knew a lot of the law. They knew the law and they were correct in what the law says. They were correct in everything, but they lacked compassion. They lacked the Holy Spirit. They lacked a relationship, a true relationship with Jesus Christ. They lacked empathy. Now, keep in mind, I am in no wise saying that we are supposed to hold back on the word and we're not, you know, we're not going to do away with holiness. We're not going to do away with the fact that Jesus wants us to walk a straight and narrow path. We're not going to do away with the fact that God still speaks about sexual immorality being wrong, that he preaches about a hell. He preaches about take picking up your cross and following him we're not going to deviate from that but what i'm trying to tell you in addition to that is that you need to understand that you see the pharisees and the the scribes at that time they knew the law which is equivalent to us today that we know the word of god believers today that know the word of god you are well versed in the word you went to the you know, Jesus Academy. Okay. You are, you, you you're a theologian. You know, the word of God, you know what the word says. You have studied it. You're spending time, but what is the condition of your heart? You see, because that's what it really boils down to with the Pharisees and the scribes, the condition of their hearts. They knew what the law says and they were ready to impose it. They knew the law. They knew the laws of Moses, yet they were blind to the Son of God right in front of their faces. And they challenged him and they questioned him and they came to him in all different scenarios in the Bible. They were challenging him about his disciples eating sheaves of corn in the field on the Sabbath. They challenged him about his various miracles. He challenged the the man that he gave his sight. They challenged him. They called his parents and then they end up kicking him out of the city. They challenged him. They want to know, um, what do we say? What do you say about the law? What do you say about this? They challenged him with the adulterous woman. What were they supposed to do with her? There was always a challenge and ultimately they feared because he was causing people to turn to him and they were following him and they were all concerned about keeping their followers, right? Keeping their following, keeping their little group. And so they were truly, it was fear. And so what happens is they have so much of the law and they're so well, they they come from this 
polished background because a lot of the Sadducees and the scribes were wealthy as they come from this polished background that they become indignant and puffed up to the point that they are going to destroy the very, the, the creator of heaven and earth, the son of God. So guys, this is what happens today. People are getting caught up in, you, you know the word of God, but you don't have the heart of God. You know the word of God, but you don't have discernment and you're not being led by the Holy Spirit in what to say. Take, for example, when the adulterous woman was brought to him, the law, the Pharisees were right when they brought him to Jesus and say, what the law says that we're to stone her. And they were correct in that. But yet Jesus saw something else and spared her life and said, you who is not sin cast the first stone. When he saw the Samaritan woman by the well, he, he, he told her everything that she had done. He was sitting with a publican and sitting with all these individuals and the Pharisees had something to say about that because this is what the law says, right? And so they wanted, they, you know, that they're from the get them crew. We got to get them. You understand? They come out like Wyatt Earps. They're going to come out like the Hulk. They're coming out like the, the Terminator. They're determined to eradicate. And that is not what the word of God is for truly. Our purpose is to seek and to save the laws. A lot of times we want to whip people. We want to harpoon folks. You understand? Like a deep sea fishing and not realizing that God has sent us. And when he saves us, he opens up our eyes. And now we are supposed to go out into a wounded and blind and darkened world. So we have to have the heart of God. So even though we have to still speak his word, speak the truth and not dilute it, we have to also be led by the Holy Spirit, which is what the Pharisees were lacking. They knew law, law, law. A lot of times as believers today, we know word, word, word. But listen, you may know the word of God, but you have to have discernment and be led by the Holy Spirit that God will show you something about that person. So that, you know, you can't just be bringing a scripture to them to wound them. He's going to show you, give you the discernment to know, hey, you don't need to say that particular thing. You share the scripture, but then you need to pull back and let me do the rest. You need to be able to look at this person and God will speak to you. The Holy Spirit will lead you in what you need to say to this person because he's going to open your eyes and you're going to see beyond what they're doing, beyond how they're reacting or not reacting, beyond the fact that they didn't call you back. All these different things, the Holy Spirit is going to open your heart and mind and let you see them so you know exactly how to be applying the word, the laws of God to them at that particular time. And sometimes you just need to sit. Sometimes you just need to talk to them. Sometimes you need to just allow the Holy Spirit to do the other, do the work, not attack. It's not always a charge situation. Okay. But you have to have discernment. And that's what the Pharisees were lacking. They lack compassion. They lack the heart of a servant. You understand? They knew so much that they start to elevate themselves that when the son of God came, they killed him. And so a lot of you are doing the same thing. We all have to be careful, me included, that you don't think that you're so cool with God and you know so much that you are killing the son of God. And how are you doing that? You're killing, you're killing the person that he's trying to bring to him. You run ahead of him. You want to be like Peter, you know? When they were coming to get God in the garden, guess what? He got mad and chopped the air off of the prison of the guard that was trying to get him. And you know what? I think the situation called for it. But guess what? That's not what God wanted. Paul was in his, Peter was in his feelings. This is what he wants to do. But there was a purpose. God saw this has to happen. And God at that, and Jesus, who is God, the all one, he, he healed the ear of the guard. And said okay let's go take me with you so a lot of times we want to charge ahead of the father because you know the law you destroy the son when the son is bringing someone to you and said hey 
or bring someone in your life that crossed your path where they're lost and he wants you to apply his word but using his discretion and using his discernment and waiting on him and knowing how much of this word you need to give to what degree to what extent when you need to pull up and let him do the rest and a lot of times we're lacking that right so then that is the the, the righteousness that God is saying that is like the Pharisees you want to give law 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 and punishment and this is what needs to happen you want to eradicate no you got to realize you want to eradicate the powers of darkness our battle is not against flesh and blood but it's against principalities and darkness and the rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places you'll find that in Galatians 6 starting at chapter 12 so you have to stop trying to take a sinner personally you got to stop taking your brother and sister personally and I'm talking to myself too you understand so when you realize your battle is not against flesh and blood you're wielding the word of God against that to, you know, to, to let that spirit within that individual that's keeping them bound in dark, you teach them word and you tell them, hey, this is what the word of God says. Okay, now you set the word there. Now you got to let the Holy Spirit do the rest. Do the rest. Not you sitting there talking about, you're going to hell. You're going to hell. You're going to die. This is what's going to happen. Nah, son. You, you way out of line. You are a barrel sea. How do we ensure that our righteousness is not like the Pharisees and the scribe? Number one, always do a heart check. Always go before the Lord. I don't care how long you've been saved, how many sermons you preach, how much anointing. Remember, your gift can operate even though you're in sin. You see, Samson was still shaking himself, shaking himself, but the, the, the Lord had left him. And he wasn't aware of it. So we have to always allow the Holy Spirit to check our hearts. We always have to get before God. You have to come before him with a humbleness. Go before him as a servant. And he will show you what's within you. Because we are flawed. We are flawed. Even in our best intentions, we can. There can be something hidden in our heart that we don't know. So you don't want to be giving God's word and wielding his word irresponsibly. So that is when you got to do this, where you have the righteousness of God and the righteousness of God comes with compassion. It comes with his love. It comes with his love and having a heart and a love for his people, sinners included the way that he does. He causes the sun to shine on the just and the unjust. If we had our own way, we'll have a part of the, the, the earth with no sun at all and no rain, just dry, right? That's why we're not God. So we have to be careful how we're delivering his word, how we're bringing his word. All right, guys, so I don't want to take too long, but just remember that your righteousness needs to exceed that of the Pharisees and the scribe. You don't want to miss heaven on a technicality. All right, guys, don't forget to like, share, and to subscribe. And I pray that this word has made sense to you. All right, peace out.